You're listening to Tim Bolkley's 5-Minute Bible. Universalism or not. Part 2. Psalm 69. Psalm 69 is uh, not untypical of the commonest kind of psalm in the Book of Psalms, the commonest genre of psalm. It's a complaint. And it begins typically, Save me, O God, I'm about to drown. I'm sinking deep in the mud. My feet are slipping. and I'm about to be swept under a mighty flood. I'm worn out with crying. My throat is dry. I've waited for you till my eyes are blurred. And then he gets to the reasons for the complaint. There are more people who hate me for no reason than there are hairs on my head. Many terrible enemies want to destroy me, God. Am I supposed to give back something I didn't steal? You know my foolish sins. Not one is hidden from you. And then there's the typical statement of uh, trust in God. Lord God, all-powerful ruler of Israel, don't let me embarrass anyone who trusts and worships you. It's for your sake alone that I'm insulted and blush with shame. I'm like a stranger to my relatives, like a foreigner to my own family. And then the psalmist goes on and asserts his love for God and the rest of it. And then in verse 16, Answer me, Lord. You're kind and good. Pay attention to me. You're truly merciful. Don't turn away from me. I'm your servant, and I'm in trouble. Please hurry and help. Come and save me from my enemies. Which all sounds fine and good. Except, he goes on in verse 19, You know how I'm insulted, mocked, and disgraced. You know every one of my enemies. I'm crushed by insults, and I feel sick. I had hoped for mercy and pity, but there was none. Enemies poisoned my food, and when I was thirsty they gave me vinegar. Make their table a trap for them and their friends. Blind them with darkness and make them tremble. Show them how angry you are. Be furious and catch them. Destroy their camp and don't let anyone live in their tents. Okay, what do we do with a psalm like that? There are lots of them. Psalms where the psalmist prays for vengeance on his enemies. Do we assume that God's answer to such prayers is always, No, sorry mate, I can't do that, that would be nasty, and I'm not a nasty person really. Or do we assume that there are some occasions when God's reply to such prayers is either a yes or a modified yes? Let's face it, all of us have candidates who deserve God's punishment. So what do we do with these prayers of imprecation? Does God never answer them? In which case there are an awful lot of prayers that God refuses to say yes to. Or are there some sins which are just so bad that even a God who is dying to save us has to say sorry that's too much I don't know but I do know that if God is just then those who hurt others and in particular those who hurt others terribly and persistently and deliberately deserve some kind of punishment and if God doesn't punish them then God is not just of course I don't want God to be just when God is dealing with me I'd rather then that God was merciful and kind but you see I think we have to put another stake in the ground that says that at some point even God's mercy ends at what point that becomes true, that's one of the things I don't know, thank God. But I trust God to put it in the right place, wherever that place is, and however it works out. And that's my key to this whole issue. There is so much I don't know, but I'm content to trust God for it. And so in a way I'm ending with the psalmist. Verse 34 Heaven and earth will praise our God, so will the oceans and everything in them. God will rescue Jerusalem. He will rebuild the towns of Judah. His people will live there on their own land. And when the time comes, their children will inherit the land. Then everyone who loves God will also settle there. Amen.